Good morning and welcome to this week's uh, online service from Trentside Parish. Uh, unfortunately, due to the spike in COVID-19 cases uh, in the Anglesey Ward, All Saints is still unable to be safely opened up again. Uh, there is, however, a, said, a service of said Holy Communion on Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock at St. Saints. So let's just take a moment to be in quiet before we begin our service. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. And also with you. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, to inspire our prayer and shape our lives. For the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's say the prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us sing God's praises.
through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. The Collect for the 14th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let us rest in God's word. The first reading is from Exodus, chapter 14, verses 19 to 31. Then the angel of God, who had been travelling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other, so neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on the dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing towards it and the Lord swept them back into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses' servant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading is taken from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 to 12. Accept the one whose faith is weak without quarrelling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows him to eat anything. But another, whose faith is weak, eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does. For God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, servants stand or fall. And they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. 
and whoever abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives uh, for ourselves alone and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bear before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 to 35, and I'll be reading from the New International Version. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the reckoning, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that servant released him and forgave him his debt. But that same servant, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow servants, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and besought him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused, and went and put him in prison, till he should pay the debt. When the fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported him to the Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you besought me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I have mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord delivered him to the jailers till he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Glory to you, O Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to start uh, uh, this week by telling a, a story. The story of an atheist. He was sitting underneath a tree, uh, one day just smugly thinking to himself, God, I know you don't exist. But if you did, you must be really stupid. You created a huge oak tree to carry a little acorn, and such a puny plant to carry a marrow. Now, if I'd been you, I'd have created the oak tree to carry the marrow, and the marrow plant to carry the acorn. Makes more sense. But as he was uh, uh, reflecting on his own wisdom, an acorn suddenly fell and hit him on the head. Without uh, thinking, he exclaimed, Thank God that wasn't a marrow. How often uh, do we have the attitude that we know better than God? Uh, our second reading uh, from Matthew 18 uh, this morning. And Matthew 18 uh, speaks a lot about our attitudes. <clears throat> so, um, Matthew 18 opens up in verses 1 to 9, talking about the necessary attitude uh, to get into the kingdom. 
Jesus said in verse 3, Unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus then goes on to talk about God's attitude to us in verses 12 to 14. Jesus tells the story of the lost sheep to illustrate how God sees us uh, before we were even Christians. And last week, uh, our reading from Matthew 18, uh, verses 15 to 20, was all about our attitude to conflict resolution in the church. How we are meant to deal with conflict with our brothers and sisters. And then finally, in this week's reading, Matthew 18, verses 21 to 35, Jesus speaks about forgiveness. Peter asked Jesus, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times. Peter now was thinking he was being pretty generous when he offered seven times. But Jesus replies, no, 70 times seven. 490 times. It's pretty hard to find someone who needs forgiving more than that in any one day. <clears throat> but what does the word forgiveness mean? Well, one dictionary defines this as the state of being forgiven or the act of forgiveness. The word forgives means to pardon, to remit or let off debt. There are three aspects of forgiveness I want to look at this morning. The first one is the state of our sins being forgiven. The second is a requirement, however, that we also forgive others. And then thirdly, the resultant healing and peace that forgiveness brings. So the first one, the state of our sins being forgiven. Humankind chose to go its own way and so sinned. Scripture tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Yet God has provided a way out. God the Father sent his son Jesus, who lived a perfect life, to take the penalty of the sin of the world on himself. Jesus died on the cross for our sakes, for mine, for yours. Ephesians 1 verse 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Jesus' blood was shed for your sin and mine. God has forgiven us so much that this surely has to uh, affect our relationship to others as well. The act of forgiveness of other people's sin. Let's look at the second part. God will not forgive when we do not forgive. Jesus taught this principle very clearly in today's Gospel reading. The parable opens with the king deciding to settle accounts one day. He finds a servant of his with a debt that was simply unpayable. But the man falls down on his knees and begs for mercy. For in Jesus' time, it would be the whole family that would be sold into slavery to enable the payment of debts of the father. The king then shows pity, and so he decides to forgive him his debt in total. We then move on to a second scene, where the servant who has just been let off an absolute fortune finds another servant who owes him just a few pounds, if by equivalent. Like the first man, the other servant begs for mercy. But this time, unlike the king, the first servant has no grace or mercy. We then move to the final scene, in which the king finds out about the callous heart of the first servant. Remember, he'd been let off so much, he couldn't even attempt to pay it back. So the king calls the unmerciful servant uh, in and tells him that because he received mercy, 
he should have shown mercy. But since he didn't have mercy on the fellow servant, so the king will not have mercy on him now. In the same way, Jesus says, how we, uh, how we act reflects how God will deal with us. Jesus' teaching was revolutionary in its day. Still pretty much so today. Because forgiving those who wrong you was contrary to the religious teaching of the Jews of his day. The parable goes to the heart of the Christian message. We are all breakers of God's law. But Jesus came to take the penalty for our sins upon himself. In mercy, God lets us off. However, when we become uh, Christians, God wants us to change. It's often said that God accepts us as we are. Yes, he does. And thank God for that. Because if he didn't, we would never ever have a relationship with him. But God doesn't want us to stay as he found us. He wants us to change. So our attitudes slowly become more like his attitudes. One of these is that to learn to forgive. It goes against the grain, doesn't it, sometimes? We all like to be forgiven uh, if we make a mistake, but we are not quite so quick in forgiving others. Unforgiveness leads also to bitterness in our relationship to the people around us. <clears throat> I remember how uh, Corrie Ten Boom spoke of the difficulty she had forgiving one of her, her guards in the concentration, concentration camp at Ravensbrück, that where she'd been held and mistreated, who became a Christian, the guard did, after the Second World War. So that though by praying about it, she was able to. She struggled, but she prayed about it and then was able to. The Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6 verse 12 in the NRSV version, uh, we read, Forgive us our debts as we also forgiven our debtors. In other words, we are asking God to forgive us in the same measure that we forgive others. If you are a miserable forgiver, you are asking God to be the same to you. Forgiveness releases not only the, the other, but also yourself. And I know this for a fact for myself. Jesus actually commands us to forgive one another in a lot of places in, in the Gospels. Here are a few. In Mark 11 verse 25, it says, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you too. Luke 17 verse 4 If a brother sins against you seven times in a day and seven times comes back to you and says, I repent, forgive him or her. God wants us to have the heart of the Father, a forgiving heart. If we really love God, we will forgive. As Paul says in Colossians uh, chapter 3 verse 13, Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you have against one another. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. This leads me to the third part, uh, to the, the result of forgiveness. Forgiveness brings healing, peace and abundant life. The first result of forgiveness is healing. Some people remain bitter all their lives over real and uh, apparent hurts. By releasing forgiveness does, does not mean that we agree with what the other person has done. But, and this is the important part, it will release us from the roots of bitterness. There are some people who are so um, aggressive so um, that they can make 
Good morning sound like a declaration of war. Psalm 103 verse 3 talks of the God who forgives all, who forgives all your sin and heals all your infirmities. Many illnesses occur or are made worse because of bitterness and unforgiveness. It is a medical fact, I'm told, that bitterness can bring us ill health. Peace, on the other hand, is the result of forgiveness, and this brings with it healing. Many people cannot forgive and, land up, and, and end up committing suicide. Forgiveness is healing. In the book of Revelation, there is a picture given in, in uh, chapter 2, verse 14, of what heaven will be like. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are, are for the healing of the nations. I wonder, I wonder if those leaves may well be the leaves of forgiveness. The psalmist recognised that forgiveness results in health when he said in uh, Psalm 41 verse 4, O Lord, have mercy on me, heal me, for I have sinned against you. <clears throat> the other uh, result of forgiveness is peace. Forgiveness brings with it peace, a peace that the world cannot give. In 1 John uh, chapter 4, verse 18, we read, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out all fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. The final uh, result of forgiveness is abundant life. By forgiving, we release the power of God in our life. The forgiveness only God can bring. Jesus in John 10 verse 10 said, I come that they might have life and have it in abundance. Life not just a little bit, but life in abundance. I wonder this morning, will you receive this gift of forgiveness from Christ today? And then, will you pass it on to others? Amen. Let us affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed. Please respond in the words and words. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us sing God's praise. Covered by your grace so free 
To, the, to extend this charity to all who are penitent. May our, your church be a place where deliverance abounds. Lord of faith and truth, we bless your holy name. God of mercy, you hold before us a model of justice tempered by mercy. Inspire those in political office to promote the restoration of those who offend. Bless the work of rehabilitation centres and projects. Lord of faith and truth, we bless your holy name. God of mercy, you release us from a debt we can never pay. We pray for all out of their debt, financially and exposed to the unscrupulous. Bless the work of credit unions and banks that promote responsible lending. Lord of faith and truth, we bless your holy name. God of mercy, you, your compassion challenges us to work for relief from suffering. Pour out your healing presence on all who struggle to cope with their illness. Stand between us and all that would destroy us. Lord of faith and truth, we bless your holy name. God of mercy, whether we live or die, we are yours. Receive in your love all who have died. Bring us to the place where sins are cancelled and we dwell in the equity of your love. Bring in our prayers together, we say, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So let us sing our praises to God.
joining us uh, this morning for this online version of our worship for Trimside Parish. The power of God be about you. The love of Christ enfold you. The joy of the Spirit be with you. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.